Howdy again everyone, and let's get straight into this one. After testing over 550 different camera lenses across all kinds of different camera systems, here are the 10 best low budget lenses I ever came across, or at least my favourite ones, I'm sure other people will have their own opinions. These aren't just lenses that happen to offer good value for money. If you know how expensive 800mm lenses normally are, then you'll know that the $6,500 Nikon Z 800mm f6.3 is fantastically good value for money comparatively if you're loaded. This is a video for normal people like me who need to watch their pennies closely, so I'm counting lenses here that are cheap but also fantastically good and practically useful. I'm going to count them in order of their release dates. As usual, you'll find links to full reviews down in the description below, and if you want to support the channel a little bit, then you'll find affiliate links down there too, and thanks in advance. Now, the earliest lens in this list is over 14 years old now, the Nikon AFS DX 35mm f1.8 G lens is a brilliant, neat little thing, an utterly obvious choice for anyone using an APS-C or DX Nikon digital SLR camera, and a fantastically good value optic too. On an APS-C camera, which is what this lens is designed for, 35mm is a lovely standard field of view, neither wide angle nor telephoto, so this lens is crazy versatile, and f1.8 is a wonderfully wide aperture for getting pictures in dark situations and out of focus backgrounds, even its build quality and autofocus were reasonably modern, what more could you possibly want for 200 bucks? It always bugged me that Canon never bothered to make a lens like this for their own APS-C digital SLR cameras, and my bewilderment only grew when I finally got round to testing this Nikon lens and discovered that it's really pretty good quality. I wonder how many of them Nikon actually made and sold, it must have been warehouses full. Next up, another APS-C camera lens, this time one of the first available on Sony's mirrorless E-mount cameras. Now with a tighter angle of 50mm, this lens is much more suitable for portrait and subject photography where it really shines, and it has two major advantages. Firstly, image stabilisation, which at the time was mostly unheard of in an f1.8 lens, and secondly, really nice sharpness, even on a 24 megapixel camera and decently soft out of focus backgrounds. I love how old school this lens is and yet how brilliant and very very useful. If you're shooting on one of Sony's APS-C E-mount cameras which doesn't have in-body image stabilisation, then this lens is worth every penny of its asking price, it's lovely and sharp just don't get the nasty silver version that I ended up testing here. Next up, the Canon EFM 22mm f2 STM. Oh boy, I liked this lens, a pancake lens with a bright aperture and the full frame equivalent focal length of 35mm, that's just about every box for me that an optic could possibly tick. It might sound like an odd thing to say, but the EFM 22mm f2 always struck me as a bit of a crazy maverick lens, if that makes any sense to you, it's trying to do more than it should be able to. It has monstrously heavy vignetting, which is an indicator of just how much Canon were pushing the parameters of a pancake lens to get such a bright maximum aperture in there but it's fairly sharp and has great close up capability and image quality and of course it's so small that it makes your mirrorless EOS M camera, even if it's a bit outdated, a fantastically tiny system. I really hope that Canon remake this lens for their EOS R mirrorless cameras, as it would be a great fit for their new APS-C models like my EOS R7 or especially the new EOS R50 with its tiny size. Now, the second Canon lens on this list came out in 2014, just in time for me to get a copy from a camera shop in Busan while I was on a filmmaking trip to South Korea. Until this lens came out, the wonderful world of ultra-wide angle photography had an expensive entry fee. Ultra-wide lenses were either pricey or poor quality. 
But now, for 300 bucks, anyone shooting with an APS-C Canon digital SLR camera had access to incredibly wide angles and image stabilization. Most of all though, this lens is nice and sharp. Even when I recently retested it on a 32.5 megapixel camera, it was no slouch, turning in decently sharp images, even considering its low price. And the third Canon lens on this list is an absolute no-brainer. Designed for full-frame SLR cameras, the Mark I and Mark II versions of Canon's famous Nifty 50 lens sold incredibly well and can be found a little cheaper than this STM version of the lens. But the STM version I'm listing here has somewhat better contrast, better build quality, better autofocus, and a closer focus distance. So I would recommend getting this version of the lens from 2015 over the older lenses any day, even though it's not really any sharper. For $100, it simply doesn't get any better value than this. It really is the ultimate lens to open up the world of shallow depth of field photography to beginner photographers and anyone else on a low budget. By the way, I also tested Nikon's equivalent F-mount 50mm f1.8 lens a while ago and it was perfectly fine as well, so for users of Nikon's digital SLR cameras, that's a nice option for you too. Ok, next up, this list was getting a little boring, so here's something completely different for anyone who's feeling a little adventurous. Want to get some seriously unique images, or just love macro photography? Well, this cheap little manual focus lens will get you an unbelievable 4.5 times magnification to your subject. Just look at these crazy pictures. Be warned though, it's a macro only lens, it cannot focus to normal distances, and despite its bright aperture of f2, at such magnifications your image will actually be very dark so you will need to use a tripod with this lens, which can get a bit fiddly when you're working so close to your subject. Ok, next up, the Tamron 35mm f2.8 Di3 OSD M1-2. Ok, this lens's parameters might look a little boring on paper, but it's full frame, it's weather sealed, it's very inexpensive, and it has a fabulous semi-macro capability, getting you potentially very close to your subject, which is always great fun on a wide angle lens, in my opinion. Its 35mm focal length is seriously useful, the maximum matter of f1.2, well, a good start. Most of all though, its images are really sharp, even into the corners on a full frame camera with plenty of good contrast, leaving you with very punchy images of just about anything you choose to put in front of it. I have fond memories of taking this lens with me to a little retreat I took in mid Wales about a year ago and exploring the beautiful countryside with it and the towns at night time with it on my Sony a7R 3 camera, it really is an enjoyable lens to use. And now, a Fuji lens. Yes, you are watching the right video. The Fuji X system is definitely not well known for having low priced official lenses, which is why the announcement of this thing sent my head spinning around. It has the optical quality and small size of the wonderful XF 35mm f2 lens, but with a cheaper plastic body and its price tag cut in half. Yes, for only 200 bucks, you can get a very nice, sharp lens for your Fuji X-mount mirrorless camera with a bright aperture and an angle of view that's incredibly useful. What a wonderful little gift for us all. It might not look like much, but the full Fuji XF optical quality is packed into this thing's glass and it'll take gorgeous pictures for you for a great price. Next up, an option that might take some of you by surprise, but I wanted something on this list to have an ultra bright aperture for creative photography. There are plenty of cheap 50mm f0.95 lenses out there in the world which can get you stunning images, but most of them have dreadful image quality, particularly when shooting close up or looking in your image corners. Well, the Seven Artisans company did something interesting here. They decided to darken that maximum aperture down to f1.05, and in doing so, managed to improve their lens's technical image quality to being acceptable, 
while still giving you ridiculously out of focus backgrounds in your images. So, to my mind, this lens offers a nice balance between crazy aperture brightness and offering some kind of decent image quality, which is why I really enjoyed testing it out in the end. So, if full frame, manual focus lenses of this kind are of interest to you, and they kind of are to me, depending on what kind of day I'm having, I reckon this is the most balanced optic you can get for your money. Either that, or shout out $7,000 for the Nikon Z Noct lens instead. <laughs> well, anyway, the Sigma 18 to 50mm f2.8 DC DNC is the last lens on this list, and it's way more conventional, more flexible, and way, way easier to use than, well, almost any of the previous lenses I've mentioned. I've always been a fan of fast standard zoom lenses for APS-C cameras. They are so incredibly versatile, and they can be smaller than full frame 24 to 70 mm f2.8 lenses, but they still tend to be pretty expensive and a rather large size, or they have poor image quality historically. This new Sigma zoom lens might not have the sharpest image corners in the world, but its overall image quality is very nice, and what's more, it's comparatively absolutely tiny, and really great value for money when you compare it to its competition. This is the ideal upgrade, in my opinion, to your camera's zoomable kit lens, but for those on a bit of a budget, or who just like their camera equipment to be lovely and small. With a zoom lens capable of shooting at f2.8, you'll be getting better shutter speeds and more out of focus backgrounds than your typical little zoomable kit lens, which translates to an easier and more photographic experience with your new camera. And this Sigma lens is currently available on Sony E and Fuji X mount cameras. Okay, well, what do you think of my list? Remember, it's kind of subjective, these are just my favourites. What's the best value lens that you've ever bought? Tell me about it in the comment section below, and check out the description for links to full reviews of each of these lenses, as well as a link to my Patreon page for some exclusive bonus content, and God bless everyone, take care.